video, I'm going to show you how we can solve a system of equations using the Runge-Kutta method. Um, this can be a, just a, a, a normal system of equations or systems of equations that come from a second or higher order differential equation, um, such as d squared y dx squared. You reduce that down to two first order equations, you could use this approach. Here I'm going to look at the predator-prey problem that uh, we looked at in class. It's the two equations described here, dr dt is equal to ar minus brf describes the rabbit population, and uh, the second df dt is equal to minus lf plus krf describes the fox population. The con I just picked some constants for the a, b, l, and k, and we're going to solve for r and f as a function of time. So the first thing I want to do is um, define function handles. So I'm going to have fr, the function handle for for the rabbits, and that's going to be a function of, um, we, c we can put here t, r, and f if we want. Um, if you look at the right hand side of this equation, it only depends on r and f, so maybe we just want to put r and f. I'll leave all three variables there for now. Um, if, you're, if your right hand side is only depends on one variable, you could just pass one variable, but in general you can pass as many variables as you want. And for the rabbits, we have a, r minus b, r, f. Function handle for the foxes. I'm also going to pass three variables t, r, and f. Um, and we're going to have minus l times f plus k, r, f. We just put semicolons there to suppress the output. Okay. The other thing I need to define is initial conditions. Initial conditions. So let's say r of 1 is equal to. How many rabbits do we want? Let's say we have 20 rabbits and foxes. Let's say we have five foxes. And let me initialize my t. t of 1 is equal to 0. So at time equal to 0, 20 rabbits and 5 foxes. Now I'm going to do my update loop. I will loop over time. So for i is equal to 1 through n, let me define a couple more things. So my step size. Uh, I'm going to call it h is equal to 0 0.1. Um, we'll see if we have to adjust that later. And let's say t final is equal to, let's do uh, uh, 50 time units. We'll see if we have to adjust that too. And that makes my n, my number of steps, to be t final divided by h. Now if that doesn't come out to be an integer, maybe I'll want to round up. So I'll put this seal around it. If you don't know what seal does, you can do help seal and read all about it. It uh, just rounds up, rounds towards infinity. Okay, so my loop, loop over i is equal to 1 to n, I'm going to update time. I'm going to have t of i plus 1 is equal to t of i plus h. And then I'm going to update r and f, the number of rabbits and the number of foxes. And here I'm going to use the runga kutta. Um, and the runga kutta, if you recall, we have to define all the k's. I'm going to have a k1 for the rabbits, and that's equal to um, f of the rabbits, so the function for the rabbits evaluated at uh, t of i, r of i, and f of i. So that's just the slope evaluated with all of the information at i, and I'm going to have a similar thing for the foxes. So k1 f is equal to f, f, t of i, r of i, f of i. Okay, so there's my k1s, my k2s, the rabbits is going to be fr times t of i plus h over 2. And let me just add uh, some space in here so that things look nice. And I'm going to have r of i plus h over 2 times now this is the slope for the rabbits. Now k1r was the original slope for the rabbits, so here I'm going to have a k1r. Okay, that says that what is my rabbit population at the mid-step, which is going to be the number of rabbits at i, plus take half a step using the slope which is for the rabbits, which is k1r. And f is going to be similar, f of i plus h over 2 times k1 for the f. Now, this also shows you that you have to compute both k's, k, uh, both k1's for the rabbits and the foxes before we can compute the k2's, because this depends on k1r and k1f. 
So we'd have to do both K1s, and then we can do the K, K2s. K2F is going to be very similar to the R's, we're just going to have an F here. It's also going to be the same time, same number of rabbits, and the same number of foxes. So all that can stay the same. My K3 is going to be very similar to this one, so let me just copy and paste. I have K3, K3, and the only difference here is I need to use K2s instead of K1s. And there's my K3. My K4 is also similar, so I'm going to copy and paste. And here, the only thing I have to do is remove the divide by twos and use a K3. And there's all my Ks. So now I can do the actual update. So R of I plus 1 is equal to R of I plus H over 6 times K1 plus 2 times K2 plus 2 times K3 plus K4. Let me just add some spaces in here just so it's a little more legible. Okay. There is my full update for the rabbits. Let me copy and paste that for the foxes. And if you look, I've neglected to include the correct R and Fs for each of these. R, F, R, F. So there is my full update for the rabbits and the foxes. Um, once I'm done here, maybe I want to plot the solution. Um, so I'm going to plot, as a function of time, the number of rabbits. You hold on and plot, as a function of time, the number of foxes. X label is time, y label is uh, populations, and let's make the font size a little bigger, so set GCA font size, let's make, um, make the font 16. And then we also put a legend on here. We have rabbits and foxes. Okay. So let me try running that. So there's the whole code. Doesn't quite fit. Um, but if I run that, uh, let's save this as uh, rabbits, foxes. And I got an error. It says, cannot find AR. Where did I have AR? Line 30. Oh, so here in line 30, I'm calling the function fr, and I'm passing t, r, and f. But up here where I define the function handle, I have ar. Well, I, want, I really want a times r, and I forgot all of my time signs. So let me put time signs in here, and uh, see if that works. Another error. Undefined function variable k2 on line 38. K2, because I wrote K2 here, which should just be a 2. I want 2 times K3. Okay, maybe now. Another error. Undefined function rule K3F. K3F, I defined K3F right here, but I kept defined it with a capital F. Here I used a lowercase f, so I need a capital F. Okay, I think it just ran, and here's my solution. Looks like it blew up, it went to infinity. I see that up here. I went 8 times 10 to the 73. So what do I do? Well, my step size is probably too big. So let's reduce my step size, run it. Um, it might have worked, but there's still this infinity here. Let's uh, clear the figure. I'm going to add a couple lines of code at figure 1, clear figure 1, rerun it. Does that work? Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's just run it for a few more cycles. It takes a little while for these population dynamics to evolve. So let's say T final is I don't know, 500. We'll run that. It takes a little while. And there we go. There's our foxes and rabbit population um, as a function of time. Now if you pick different values here, maybe you get better results. It seems like our foxes um, grow really quickly and, and take a long time to, to decay. So I'm going to make 
this number bigger, this is how fast the foxes die, and I'm gonna leave the k1 the same value. So it's the k the same value. So let's see what happens with that. So probably make their populations go faster, oh, much faster. So let's reduce down the t final. Oh, they're really. It's always good to have a clear CLC at the top of your code. And there we go. And that seems reasonable. Um, rabbits and, and foxes do that. Um, the solution for this doesn't really matter. The key is in here. Um, so when you code this, do all your K1s together, because K2s depend on, K on the K1s. Do all your K3s together, K4s together, um, and have one K for each equation. I'm going to do another video where I write this slightly differently. Um, there's a lot of symmetry in this, that, and things are done over and over again for each variable very similarly. So we can start to use that to make this code simpler to read. Um, so I'll do that in the next video, but I wanted to start here and uh, show you how to, how to do this problem.